Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Now, I'm sure you've been following uh, with great sadness what is going on in France. You know, the school teacher that showed the cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad and then the events that unfolded as, as a result. What are your thoughts on what occurred? Well, I'm, I'm especially shocked by, you know, the, the idea that uh, Muslim youth can go behead the, a school teacher and uh, that, you know, a Muslim youth can go into a church and start uh, slashing people's throats. Uh, this is uh, shocking. Uh, totally unexpected, and um, it, uh, it it behooves us to think about uh, you know what we, we Muslims need to do as uh, as a community, as a society, uh, to make sure that uh, our youth are being cultivated uh, in a way that uh, will be uh, uh, will definitely not lead to something so shocking and and uh, incredible as this. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes some Muslims seem to think that blasphemy, you know, is something that should be criminalized. And I noticed that in liberal democracies, that's not really a value. You know, people don't care about blasphemy. It's okay to critique religion. It's not, might not necessarily be okay to critique the adherence of a religion, but religion itself is open to criticism yes, and mockery. And Yes, and, and because they have adopted this uh, value or uh, in, in parallel with the developments leading to the adoption of this value, uh, the uh, modern Western liberal democracies have uh, become accustomed to uh, criticizing religion, especially their own religion. Uh, most of the modern liberal de democracies are post-Christian and, and they've come a long way in criticizing their own religion, their dogma, their scripture and uh, it is not uncommon in, in societies now to find that there are cartoons depicting God, depicting Jesus, depicting uh, uh, St. Peter uh, at the pearly gates in heaven mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Um, and they can be quite offensive, right? And, and disgusting, in fact, the way that these um, holy figures are depicted. Of course, Jesus has been depicted in movies in, in, in ways which are not palatable to uh, those who are still devout Christians. Mm -hmm. And um, and from time to time, we will hear objections from Christians saying, don't watch this movie or boycott this one or something like this because of the way in which uh, it depicts Jesus. Uh, but uh, the, the populace at large has become quite comfortable with the idea that religion uh, is uh, open to criticism. The way they would say it is that there are no sacred House. And um, and so they will find it surprising that that Muslims uh, are, are are taking offense when uh, something um, by way of criticism or a caricature is uh, done that targets the religion of Islam or any of our sacred figures or our scripture or, or God. So why do you think that Muslims care that much? Well, in Muslim societies, it has been very commonplace uh, for a long time that uh, blasphemy is taboo. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, for Muslims, uh, the belief is wide ranging. We believe not only in our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but in previous prophets as well, in Jesus and Moses and, and so on. And we respectfully say peace be upon him when we mention the names of these great prophets. Uh, so Muslims uh, have become accustomed to the idea that you can't blaspheme any of God's prophets. You cannot blaspheme God, you cannot uh, criticize the scripture of Islam, and by extension, some Muslim societies and some Muslim scholars have said that uh, we, we have to have uh, respect for the other scriptures as well. The Quran itself uh, insists that uh, the Torah, uh, the, the Psalms, and the Gospel are revealed scriptures from God. And, and while the Quran uh, gives some reason for Muslims to be uh, cautious about the transmission history of some of these scriptures. Nonetheless, uh, there are Muslim scholars who said, for example, that uh, you, you, just as a Muslim needs to have ablutions, you need to be in a state of purity before you even touch the Quran, uh, you need to be in the state of purity before touching the Bible as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, with, with this in mind, uh, it's uh, understandable that, that Muslims uh, are uh, very much sensitive to the, the idea of criticism of sacred things and, and of sacred 
sacred figures. And I guess Muslims also adhere more to their religious uh, traditions, right? As opposed to maybe people of other faiths, uh, Christians I'm thinking of, who might not practice as much. Um, Muslims, you know, Islam is part of their daily life, right? It's part of the way they dress, it's part of the way they eat. It, 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 it affects many aspects of their life. Yes, uh, this is true. So uh, for, for Muslims, uh, you know, as, as, uh, a devout Muslim will, will find it, uh, even, even Muslims who are not so very much uh, like devout in terms of like paying careful attention to adhere to all of the uh, major practices of Islam, you will find that uh, in, in Muslim societies, the idea of God is uh, just uh, simply uh, something that people live with uh, continuously. Even the, uh, let's say, a non-devout Muslim uh, may start doing good things by saying Bismillah in the name of God. Um, they might hear the name of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they will say peace be upon him dutifully like this. Uh, so, so the, uh, yeah, Yes, these things are very dear to, to Muslims. But there's another aspect that I, I believe that we must honestly confront. And that is the, the fact that uh, in uh, the, the, there are classical books written um, that explain the religion of Islam. And, uh, and these, the, these classical interpretations uh, of Islam uh, make it so uh, objectionable to criticize uh, God or the Prophet or the scripture of Islam uh, to the extent that they prescribe the death penalty for the Critic. And, um, uh, you know, there are different ways of, of understanding this. Uh, the uh, most cautious way would be to say that, okay, if somebody is uh, openly criticizing the faith, that person may be brought to the uh, court and, and be given a chance to recant. If that person has some doubts, uh, you know, things would be explained to that person. And, you know, maybe he'll be called in three days, uh, one after another, to give him a chance and to rethink. And then when he recants, especially when he knows that, that the axe is going to fall on him, then naturally he's going to, you know, he's going to want to uh, recant unless somebody is really on principle uh, sticking to his guns and saying, you know, I fear nothing. I, I just want to be on the, what, what I believe I, I want to say. Uh, so people might recant. So that's the most cautious way. But then, So are, are you saying this is part of Islamic law then? Well, well, yes, this is known in Islamic law. This is uh, quite common in classical Islamic books. And uh, they, so that's the most cautious way. But uh, somebody else may say, well, wait a minute, they, there is a report saying that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, validated the action of a person who took the matter in his own hand and, and slaughtered the critic. Um, so uh, with, with this in mind, you can very much uh, uh, imagine that uh, if, if this is being, uh, you know, acculturated among Muslims, that this is how we regard blasphemy. If somebody blasphemes, we might kill him. Then uh, even if you say, it, it's only you know through the legal process that he will be killed. You're automatically saying that this person deserves death, mm -hmm. and and if you're thinking that this person deserves death, then there is no law that's going to inflict the death penalty on him, especially where you live, where it be, whether it be France or Canada or the United States or Australia or wherever. Uh, then you you might well imagine that somebody may take this up into their own hands and saying this guy deserves death, but no law is going to uh, give him the death penalty, so I'll do it myself, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the worst case scenario is with those rulings which say that the individual can take it upon himself and do this. Uh, so when we see that something like this, which is totally shocking and unexpected happening, um, when we, we need to retrace our steps and ask ourselves, how did we as a society get here? And, and this is one of the things that uh, I find that we need to uh, go back at and, and revise. We, so what we do you think have... we can do with that, with that part of our tradition? Well, we have to confront that tradition and we have to say, OK, this uh, uh, tradition developed away from the Quran. And, and we, uh, we actually have a, a, a reasonable fix for this. So what does the Quran uh, the, say? The, the Quran, on the other hand, shows that, uh, we, uh, you know, the blasphemer has the freedom to blaspheme. In this life, God is going to bring them to justice and the life hereafter. But in, in terms of this life, there is no penalty that is mentioned in the Quran for such a, a person. To be sure, there are penalties in the Quran which uh, the, the modern uh, person, you know, might find objectionable. Uh, there are prescriptions in the Quran about cutting the hand of the thief and uh, uh, flogging the adulterer and so on. In modern uh, liberal democracies, these are thought to be uh, 
uh, cruel and unusual, cruel and, punishments. Uh, un unusual punishments. Yes. So I'm not I'm not saying let's apply that now. I'm, I'm you know, but but I'm, I'm I'm saying let's admit that the Quran has these punishments uh, mentioned there. Uh, uh, but but no such punishment, no punishment, no physical punishment uh, to be meted out in this world uh, is mentioned in the Quran. Uh, in the case of the blasphemer. Mm -hmm. uh, the Quran actually shows that people have the freedom. The Quran says, man afal man afal yakfur. Whoever wishes, let him believe. Whoever wishes, let him not believe. Uh, the, the Quran actually uh, it tells the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the believers at large, uh, that you will hear many things that will hurt you mm -hmm. uh, from those who had received, received the scripture prior to you and from the polytheists. But if you are patient and if you are mindful of God, then that is the great determination that God is looking for. So uh, what we have to do is be patient in the in the uh, face of such criticism and uh, and and insults from others. And I guess the Quran was being revealed at a time when the Prophet Muhammad was facing the, that ridicule, that mockery, and he even feared for his life, right? Exactly. And uh, and and the Quran does not uh, say that uh, you know the blasphemer does not uh, uh, you know should be limited when, especially when the Muslim polity was set up. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, became the virtual ruler uh, of uh, Medina. He controlled uh, that uh, polity and uh, he could have enacted laws which said that the blasphemer uh, should be killed. And uh, certainly in, in Hadith, which was you know circulated orally at first and then collected in the standard collections we have here after a long period of time, uh, after the passing of at least a hundred years, uh, then uh, you know here there was a scope for people to invent things and and foist that into the mouth of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But the Quran itself, which is a very authentic document, uh, certainly coming from within his lifetime, uh, does not have anything uh, like this uh, that says that the blasphemer should be penalized in, in this life. On the other hand, uh, it is clear that the blasphemers are uttering their blasphemies, and the Quran actually repeats their, their, their words. Hmm. The Quran is saying, okay. they are saying this, uh, you know, in the Mayu Ali Muhu Bashar. So, instead of the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, re receiving the Quran from on high, from heaven, the Quran says that the, the others are saying that the, somebody is teaching the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, this, that some human being is or teaching him this. Or that he's a madman or a magician, exactly. all these things They're are mentioned in the calling him Quran. Majnoon, a, a, a madman, he's jinn possessed and so on. So their blasphemies are actually repeated in the Quran and of course answered in the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that sh sets up for us the model on how we deal with blasphemy. If somebody is saying something that's wrong, uh, we do a fact check, a fact check, and and we present the correct information. And uh, if we present the correct information, that will be the way of quelling the the uh, the criticism. And of course, if some people are stubborn, they want to remain critics, they want to remain disbelievers. That is the freedom that God has already given them, and it's not for us to penalize them in any physical way uh, in this life. But we leave the judgment uh, to God. And, and we ourselves, we need to demonstrate what it means to follow the Prophet Muhammad, okay. peace be upon him. A peaceful, uh, serene person would represent our Prophet, peace be upon him. And uh, the, the violent person is actually misrepresenting our Prophet. And if you think you're defending the Prophet, peace be upon him, by being violent, you've actually got it upside down. It, because by your being violent, you're giving the impression to non-Muslims uh, that your Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, must have had an influence on you like this to make you a violent person. So mm -hmm. what does that make? your prophet. So, so we are misrepresenting our prophet, peace be upon him, if we react with violence. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome.